بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on our study of the كلمة تفسير كلمة توحيد الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله continue on in our study of تفسير كلمة التوحيد and the Quran shows that all the prophets proclaimed and called to this meaning of the statement of Tawheed and its establishment as well. Meaning that all the prophets alayhim after salatu was salam called to Tawheed and they called to Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the uh, Tawheed al-Ibadah, that all the worship actually belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمُ وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الْتَعْبُونَ And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone, to proclaim uh, the إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ To worship Allah alone, وَاجْتَنِبُ الْتَعْبُونَ And to be away from all those things, those false deities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمُ وَلَكَدْ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that the purpose of his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that they should proclaim the statement La ilaha illallah and worship him and get close to him by worshipping him in the way he deserves and in the way that he legislated and is pleased with. So this is how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not based upon our whims, it's not based upon our views and our opinions and newly invented manners, but it is in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and in order to have our deeds accepted, it, two things should be in place. First, that we have ikhlas lillah, and secondly, that it is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, it must be, uh, therefore, it is a must on us to know the meaning of la ilaha illallah, that Allah is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. And that nothing else other than Allah deserves to be worshipped, whether it be messengers or all the prophets or the angels or the righteous people, they don't deserve to be worshipped, even at an, even in Adam's weight. Rather, all of them are worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah the Exalted says, In kullu min man fi samawati wal ard, illa ata rahman abdan, lakad asahum wa addahum adda. وَكُلُّهُمْ أَتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرَضًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ There is none in the heavens and the earth but comes unto the most beneficent Allah as a slave. Verily, He knows each one of them and has counted them a full counting. And every one of them will come to Him alone on the day of resurrection without any helper or protector or defender. So we will come before our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think for Ahl Tawheed, this is not, I'm not saying anything new. And in fact, I hope that people aren't bored, but hopefully that the reminder benefits the believer. And that we know the, our relationship with our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we worship Him and Him alone. It's not sufficient that we just say la ilaha illallah, but yet we still associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We still say our sheikh shares in lordship, or our sheikh knows the unseen, or the dead know the unseen, or we supplicate to the dead, we supplicate to our elders, or our village uh, chiefs, or whatever the case may be. But rather, all of that ibadah goes to Allah alone, not to the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, not to the angels, alayhim salatu wasalam, not to anything or anyone except Allah Azza wa Jal. Thus, 
and all of them called to the single to single out Allah and worship worshiping him with ikhlas this is ahl iman and ahl tawhid thus they are the most diligent of people in worship and the prophets are the chiefs of the people in terms of worshiping Allah they fear him with a tremendous fear and they pray to him and fast for him and give charity and fear him and humble themselves to him and have humility and fear of him and they are shy of Allah and they depend on Allah and they ask and they seek help from him in all affairs and matters and they know fully well that there is no might or change except from Allah and they believe that they don't have the capacity to benefit or harm nor to give life or cause death or to resurrect for themselves or for other people in these matters that this is all from the khasais of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the uh, the traits and characteristics that only Allah possesses. He He gives lives. He gives life. He gives death. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is al hayyu al qayyum as dua the one who hears the dua. So we supplicate to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We we make our ibadah, as the Prophet sallallahu said, a dua hu ibadah, that supplication is worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us in the Quran to supplicate to him and him alone. And lets us know that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone is the only one who can answer those du'a and the only one who can bring benefit and prevent us from harm subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah said in regards to the best of them and the most honored of them and the last amongst them Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I possess no power or benefit or hurt to myself except as Allah wills. And if I had the knowledge of the ghaib, I should have secured for myself an abundance of wealth, and no evil should have touched me. I am but a warner and a bringer of glad tidings unto people who believe. So this is the status of the messengers and the messenger of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah commands the Prophet ﷺ to say this while believing in it and calling to it with complete testification, faith and sincerity. And he the exalted also commanded him to say, Kul inni la emliku lakum darran wa la rashada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for Kitab al Kareem, He said to the Prophet, وسلم, say, it is not in my power to cause you harm or to bring you to the right path. So the uh, guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves astray, then no one can guide them. They're without guidance. Wa iyadan billah min dhalikam. So if this is the condition of the Prophet وسلم, the best of the creation of Allah and the, and the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in status, that he doesn't, وسلم, uh, then what about those who are not like him in status and those who are much lower than him like the rest of the creation, like us? And when Allah revealed the verse, and warn your tribe of, or, uh, or near, uh, of near kindred, when this was revealed, the Prophet wasallam stood up on Mount Safwa, uh, Safa and called out, saying, O Bani Abdul Muttalib, O Bani Fahr, O, Ani, o Bani Lu'ay. So they gathered, and he wasallam, said, What do you think if I told you that there was a cavalry at the foot of this mountain coming to attack you? Would you believe me? They said, Yes, we have never known you to lie. So he said, Then I warn you of a great punishment that is close at hand. Abu Lahab became angry and said, May you perish for the rest of the day. You only called us to tell us this. SubhanAllah. So they were obstinate in rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in the call to Tawheed. They didn't want to hear about Tawheed. As many of the people in creation, they don't want to hear about that. They want to hear about other things, things that uh, benefit them or they think that benefit them in this life. They want to busy themselves with uh, business and, and, and advice on how to live holistic living and how to be um, how, and self-help and things like this. But they don't look to real self-help. And that the real self-help comes from knowing your position with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing who you are and having thiqa billah, having faith and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that He tabarak wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and that you're just a tiny creation who has a time appointed here to fulfill that ibadah, to fulfill what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called you to and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clean our hearts and bless us with ilm al-nafiya wa rizqin tayyibah wa amalu mutaqabbilan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam